Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the AGM for the Worthing and Ada Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to this new format. Unfortunately, we can't do it in our traditional way this year, but um, hopefully we'll be back again next year. Um, that I'm sure most of you are well aware of the um, Zoom options here. So if I could ask that if anybody has any uh, questions to ask, please use the question and answer function. Um, we will also be needing at some point proposers and seconders, um, and they should go in the chat box. So um, we've got que questions in the question and answer and other things in the chat box, please. Um, and if you could put your name in the box when prompted, um, that would be fantastic as well. Don't be shy. Um, we do recognise we would usually ask for a show of hands um, once items have been put forward in the more formal part of the meeting, um, but we're not sure that the wave function in Zoom quite carries the same weight. So um, if you'll um, um, forgive us, we will um, presume that those who propose and second carry the weight of the whole membership behind them. Um, so this is new format for us all. Um, and it's not right to have the same running order as before. And like us all, we've all had to um, adapt recently. So we have an introduction from Jill, our patron, a couple of short presentations, and then we will run through the uh, formalities as well. We did think it was important to put on this AGM once we realized we could not be in the same room. And I'm delighted to hear that we have over 70 people joining us now. So I'd like to begin by handing over to Jill Fielding, we are fortunate that Jill has been the patron of our chamber for 11 years now. So I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, well, this is incredibly strange, isn't it? And, and who would have thought a year ago that we'd be holding the AGM in this fashion? Uh, the world is now upside down, as partly evidenced by the fact that I'm on first rather than last as normal. So how has this business world been affected by the pandemic? Well, for certain, some businesses have struggled. For certain, some businesses have actually gone out of business. And for some businesses, they've just carried on as normal as if nothing had changed. And for some other businesses, they have had greatness thrust upon them with huge increases in demand. Can you imagine being a PPE manufacturer or a manufacturer of bleach or disinfectant when this pandemic broke out? The demand must have gone through the roof. Um, on online meeting platforms like this, I now speak to my friends, my family, my business colleagues, all via Zoom. And I'd never even heard of Zoom before the pandemic. E-learning organisations, people that can provide us with education and modules and so on online have really flourished. People that provide hobby services and materials. I understand that hobby craft, their profits have gone up by a third since the pandemic started. DIY providers uh, of paint and materials. I understand lots of people, but not me. Uh, lots of people tried to paint their kitchen when lockdown started. So there was a huge increase in demand for DIY products. People like Netflix, gaming and online entertainment have all rocketed during this pandemic. Also online retail, just think about Amazon. Every time a car or a van comes down my drive, most of the time it's from Amazon. And they've taken on about 7,000 new permanent staff to cope with the increase in demand. Also, if you had an existing delivery business like Hermes or DHL, your demand would have uh, shot up. And also, curiously, some retail. Tesco's tell us that in the first six months of 2020, their pre-tax profits rose by nearly 29% over the same period last year. Now, that's a phenomenal increase, and I'm not terribly sure what we're all doing with the extra food, uh, but nonetheless, their profits have been substantially impacted. But if you're not lucky enough or don't have the good fortune to have been in exactly the right time at the right place, like all of those people I've already listed, what can we do to enhance our business or at least get us through this difficult time? 
Well, first of all, we can adapt the delivery method or the distribution process of our existing products. So we can create an online version of our products, and that's what my business has done, or we can create a home delivery version of what we do. Now, that wouldn't work for all businesses, but would work for many. So think about changing the distribution method of your product set. If you can't do that, think about adapting the product itself. And I read about a, a wedding videographer that became a funeral videographer. Now, not a pleasant change, I know, but nonetheless, it's kept that business going. Also think about utilizing your existing assets in a different format. And Singapore Airlines have used one of their Airbus A380s and turned it into a restaurant because there's plenty of space to socially distance there. Now we may not all have a spare jumbo jet in our garden, but some of us do have assets that are in the business that could be utilized for a different function. There's also been some fantastic and very successful new business startups. So there's a, a business called Stitch and Story, uh, which didn't exist before the pandemic and actually teaches people online how to knit. Uh, and that now has 11 employees, which is quite phenomenal growth in a short period of time. Also, uh, if you're thinking of setting up a new business or a new branch of your business, think about home deliveries, not only of your product set, but could you deliver other businesses products uh, as well? So expanding into the home delivery version. If you can create an online fitness or activity program, uh, that will go down well at the moment. And Jigsaw manufacturer. I understand jigsaw manufacturers just can't keep up with the demand. So maybe that's going to be your niche going forward. I also read about an organization called Geek Retreat. Now, they're a retailer of all things geeky. Now, that's their definition, not mine. Uh, and they sell things like comics and memorabilia and tabletop games and that kind of stuff. And their normal distribution channel was through gaming events. Uh, but of course, once the pandemic started, all events were stopped, so they weren't able to do that. So they opened a shop. Now, that's an amazing leap of faith to open a shop in th those circumstances. But in fact, it's been incredibly successful. They've opened more shops. They, they now aim to open five more shops a month, and, and their objective is to get to 100 stores of this kind. Now, that's an amazing turnaround for a, a small business doing something quite niche. So hopefully there's some ideas there that you can all take on board and perhaps adapt to something to your own business. And maybe there's some ideas or motivation there for you to grow and to persist through these difficult times. And I'd like to give you my five tips for how to get through this pandemic and through this strange world as best you can. Number one is have a sense of perspective. This will pass it will end eventually. Have some perspective. Our parents and grandparents were called to war and we're basically being asked to watch more TV and not to hold toilet rolls. So have a sense of perspective. Second, adapt to the circumstances where you can. Be flexible in your product ranges and in your delivery methods. Number three, consider going retro in some way. When human beings get stressed, they look to the past for comfort. So is there an old fashioned version of what you do that you can bring to the front of your marketplace? Be kind to yourself and to be kind to others and also maintain a sense of humor. A friend of mine went out and bought a map of the world and pinned it on the wall and gave his wife a dart and said, throw it in the map and wherever it lands, we'll go on a fabulous luxury holiday once this pandemic has finished. And it turns out they're gonna have a fortnight behind the fridge. So keep kind and keep humor, keep a sense of humor. And my fifth tip is this, Accept that things just won't turn out as you expected. After all, in 2015, who, when asked, where do you expect to see yourself in five years time, answered that one correctly? Absolutely no one. 
we have no idea where we are going with this or how long it will, will last. And we've not even considered Brexit here today. But entrepreneurs are traditionally very good at being creative, resilient and flexible. Otherwise, they wouldn't stay in business. And I certainly would much rather be the master or mistress of my own destiny in today's environment than be susceptible to the government's constant changes in guidance and, and rulings as they attempt to find a one size fits all support package for everybody. As small business owners, as entrepreneurs, we will adapt, change and grow. So just like to finish with, hang on in there, everyone. Just hang on in there. We will get through. And next year, we'll be live back in Worthing. And I'll be back as the final item on the agenda, I guess. Uh, and hopefully, I'll see you there. Thanks very much. Now back to you, Che. Thank you very much, Jill. Fantastic. And uh, thank you for your continued support as well. Um, so now, um, we are I've asked some of our members to encapsulate in three words what their membership of the Chamber gives to them. In these times, it is important that we understand as a Chamber our purpose as an organisation whose primary reason is to represent, develop and promote its members. Supportive, educational and inclusive. So connections, profile and community. Uh, welcoming informative and promotional supportive friendly and adaptive reliable informative and motivated fantastic membership organization okay so thanks to the members for um contributing to that um it's um really important that we re um always um, um remember who and what we are um, so now for my first president's report, which uh, there we go. Um, little did I know when uh, Chris Coopy handed over this very chain, which I must say I feel a little bit ridiculous wearing here in my bedroom with my um, uh, pajamas on under my shirt. But anyway, um, little did I know when Chris Coopy handed over the chain in order to live in the country, no doubt wearing tweed and a cap, it would be 17 months until I had my chance. It has been quite a period. I'd like to start by thanking and recognising the Chamber team. Of course, Tina, who is here today, and I'm delighted to say returning to the team next month, Tracy, Lauren and Mel, who joined us at the start of this year. 2019 was a great year, as Tony will reflect in the accounts later. We had great plans for this AGM in its usual May slot, which we had started to plan, and then came lockdown. The Chamber has evolved a lot since then. The team have worked incredibly hard and continue to ensure that we can serve you, our members, and work with our partners too. Like everyone though, we have had to make some difficult decisions too, and those are not taken lightly, but have ultimately been necessary for the future of the Chamber. I'm grateful to all involved for the courage in these, and especially the support of my Vice Presidents and the wider Executive. It really is a time where we have pulled together in many respects. This too is the Chamber's centenary year, and we had plenty planned for that as well, but we'll make up another number for that when we can. I can get excited about any number. But the purpose of this event is to celebrate the time since the last AGM, and also, and more importantly, look to the future. So what have we achieved? Here we go, I'm going to start to sound like um, witty and balance soon, but um, hopefully not be as bleak. Um, events, be connected. Events are what many members would consider to be one of our core roles. The numbers since the last AGM are something that we are very proud of and had continued to rise. We also had the first summit this time last year and we're planning on building on that this year too. Of course, now it is quite tricky to put on any events and we are regularly asked when we might start again. Given the current direction of travel, we cannot say, but the hub is still very popular every month. And we did have a breakfast last month that was well attended. The chat function within that meeting especially was really powerful. Be trained. Training is really important to us and I think will become more so. Sharing of knowledge amongst our members must surely be one of our strengths. 
These events start at Wise Up Twos and Expert Hours, snapshots or tasters, and can also include workshops. These serve as opportunities for our members to promote themselves, but also for the rest of us to appreciate what is available close by, to be represented amongst our partnership working. As a chamber, we should be seen as representing our members and being their voice. We should support local government and other organisations, but as a critical friend, challenging too, where they should be challenged, but also sharing information and directing support and resources. This has been especially beneficial over recent months and our relationships have strengthened with more frequent contact where perhaps there are only more infrequent formal channels before. We have a contribution from Martin Randall and Andrew Swain later. To be informed, the Chamber Connect magazine is something we are really proud of and has been building over recent years. We had our first e-version last month and the stats for the uh, views on that and the time spent are really impressive. It is a useful reference directory for all the Chamber activity, but we also welcome content from you, our members, to showcase your business or share your own news. Lauren very much leads that now, so please do get in touch with her. In addition, the website has been proactively reviewed for up-to-date content, and we hope it remains a useful source of information for everyone. To be developed, our peer mentoring scheme has helped a lot of businesses. I often say that running your own business can be the most lonely and thankless job there is, but meeting with other like-minded, ambitious and successful people can really add something new and take you forward. Together we are stronger and there are always things to learn. Many of these groups build genuine long-standing relationships. We have spoken about the success, about the opportunities to be promoted. Please do shout about and share your successes and let us know how we can help you. We are also reviewing our member benefits to support your business and your team. In addition to the training, we have recently signed an affiliation with Sussex Chamber of Commerce. Not only does this increase the potential for our voice to be heard in another field, but we can also share access to a range of member benefits, those that may not be as accessible to smaller businesses too, for example. More will follow on this over the next few weeks. So you can see there is plenty going on and we are continually looking ahead to find more to do. First and foremost, please do keep in touch. We can make sure, so we can make sure we are doing our best for you. And that concludes my report. So now we can move on to the more formal parts of the meeting. We'll start with the apologies. Um, now we do have a, a note of these, but if you have any to add, because many times people will come to meetings like this and uh, say that their friend is absent. So if you could use the chat function to add in anyone else who wishes to record their apologies, then um, please do so and we'll pick that up later. Um, we also have the minutes of the 81st AGM, which have been shared um, through the website. Of course, as an accountant, I struggle with the fact they're the minutes of the 81st AGM in our centenary year, but I've been told to get over it and shut up. Um, so in that case, we need a proposer and a seconder for those minutes, please. Got it. They're coming up. Thank you for, to Kelly and to Emily. Thank you very much. Those are carried. Um, I will now hand over to Tony for the Treasurer's report. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Joe. Um, right, hopefully, uh, if you have any questions and answers, uh, could you put those through uh, so I can answer those at the end of uh, this uh, quick report on the financials. The accounts have been uploaded for anyone to, to uh, view um, as part of the uh, invitation for the meeting today. Um, Interesting year last year, um, you know, good increase in uh, revenue and most importantly, a small profit of just over um, 1,100 pounds for the year. Um, obviously it's difficult times at the moment. We need to uh, ensure that um, we're giving all of our members uh, additional benefits, which, um, you know, Che has touched upon with the Sussex Chamber affiliation. We're also focusing on the expert hours, uh, the um, great training that's available still, we're still delivering online, and obviously the peer mentoring. Um, what we could do with in terms of, of support with our um, current members is obviously 
increasing the, uh, the number of members that we have and uh, helping fellow business owners in the local area um, benefit from the great services that the Chamber offers. Um, I suppose the uh, next question is, is making sure that uh, the accounts have uh, been proposed and seconded. And I don't think there's any questions on the accounts. So if that is the case, I will hand back to uh, Jay. Brilliant, thank you very much, Tony. Um, always the most exciting part of the meeting for me, that's fantastic. Um, I'd like to thank at this point, um, Tony certainly for his work as a treasurer alongside Alistair Vickers. Um, there's been a lot of work gone into the, the Chamber accounts since the last AGM um, and we've really improved how we record things there. So thank you very much to all involved, but also to Ayres Bright Vickers who do work alongside us on a regular basis and are also our auditors and they would like to stand again. So I shall need a proposal and a seconder for Ayres Bright Vickers to remain as auditors to the chamber, please. Thank you to Peter and to Tony as well. So that's, um, that's passed and thank you once again to Andrew and the team at Ayres Bright Vickers. And um, turning now to the election of officers, we have a variety of um, statuses, if you like. Um, those restanding for election after their three year term are Tony, Peter Webb and John Nolte. Within their three year terms, so this is really just for information, is myself, uh, Cathy Crane, Anne Felberg, Alistair Vickers, Keith Gallis and Simon Pilbing. Um, and we have three new nominations to the executive this year as well. We're always looking for new members and indeed ambassadors too. This year we have Paul True, who has come in with his training expertise, um, Debbie Ross through her role in education and Kate Honey, who has a strong marketing background and also leads the ambassador group. So for all of the executive, um, re-elected and newbies as well. Could I please have a proposer and seconder? That's from Tony proposing, thank you. And Kelly as well, thank you very much. And in, indeed, it's, it's interesting that Kelly um, came forward there because at this point I'd like to put on records my thanks to Kelly who has stood down from the executive after over four years in that, time, in that time, she has always been a strong advocate of small business and her views and commitment has been appreciated. I'm delighted though that she will continue to be involved in the Chamber in many ways and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you, Kelly. We now, any resolutions that have been received? I don't believe there are any, which means that we can now prepare for a video from Martin Randall, who is Director for the Economy for Age and Worthing Councils, and also Andrew Swain, who is Chair of Age and Worthing Business Partnership. Good evening, I'm Martin Randall, uh, Director for the Economy at Age and Worthing Councils. Um, terrific to be involved once again in your uh, AGM, but very difficult circumstances to, uh, to the usual um, event. And it will be great to when we can all catch up and, and meet once again. I think I just wanted to say, you know, very briefly, you know, the council hugely appreciates the partnership uh, with the chamber uh, over the years, and it feels just as sort of vibrant and um, current as ever. In fact, in particular, because of where we've all been and what we've been through uh, over the past few months and the leadership that the chamber's provided and that real sense of partnership with the council has shone through as we've as we've worked our way through this sort of crisis. Worthing and Ada have got some fantastic uh, businesses here uh, and at a time like this it's very much about sort of you know build, building upon uh, the best. Um, things like peer mentoring you know really sort of finding those areas where we can offer one another leadership um, and support uh, to get through this thing. Uh, but it's terrific to see you know businesses um, doing well uh, and reaching out to those you know who need some support through the chamber uh, and the council as I said is very proud to be uh, associated with that work. 
Hello, I'm Andrew Swain. I'm chair of the Adrian Worthing Business Partnership, and I'm here today to give you a little bit of an understanding of how we're working with the Chamber uh, and supporting the local businesses. Firstly, I would like to thank all the Chamber members for their contributions and feedback that we get via yourselves, and uh, please keep that coming. Uh, the Chamber is very much a key part of the input to the strategic lobbying that the business partnership does on behalf of all the Razor and Worthing businesses, working with education and the public sector, uh, particularly the LEP, Greater Brighton Economic Board, uh, and our own uh, Asia and Worthing councils. The things we are looking at at the more strategic lobbying level and trying to uh, get support from government and get our message through are really around business support, uh, recovery mechanisms, making sure that everybody gets a fair share of government money because there have been some holes in the initial schemes. Uh, and particularly, uh, there are a lot of issues around uh, transport infrastructure and green recovery. Uh, the business partnership is actively working on an action plan, and by the time of the Chamber's ABGM, that will have gone public. So please take a look at that. Thank you to uh, Andrew and Martin um, for that, and also for their continued um, support throughout the, the year as well. Um, we now come to any other business. I don't believe there's any questions. There's certainly none that I could see just now in the question and answer um, session, section. So I will therefore just turn to, to thank yous to close. Um, thank you, of course, to, to Tina, to Tracy, to Lauren and to Mel for all their work once again. And indeed, it's worth mentioning that Mel, uh, we welcomed our youngest member potentially uh, last week when Mel um, gave birth, um, I'm sure she has already presented a application form if she's doing her job properly. So thank you very much. But thank. But on a serious note, um, it, it's been a hell, hell of a period since the um, last AGM highs and lows, um, and you've been fantastic throughout. Thank you very much. Um, to the members of the executive, past and present, uh, including especially the vice presidents, my personal thanks to you all. Um, to the ambassadors and other supporters of the chamber who signpost people um, towards us all the time, really important, and um, thank you for that. And to you, our members, for your continued support. We're very lucky to live in this area and lucky too to work here. Please support each other. Let's work together and make sure even more people know. Thank you.